And I hope you are listening to this and you are hoping to get close to God. So the scripture I have for you is Colossians 3, verse 1, and then verse 5. Colossians 3, verse 1. Then if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. That was verse 1. Verse 5 says, Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness. <laughs> I always think of my sister when they have to say such difficult words, which is idolatry. Covetousness is idolatry, that you want something that somebody else has, their wife or their car or their house or their job or their clothes, or sometimes I covet some shoes. Um, and, and it's like worshipping that thing that you don't have. That's what it means. So we've just, you know, we've just come through the Easter weekend and um, we talk about Christ dying. So we die when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. We die to ourselves and then we get, we rise again. Um, seek the, uh, within you, if then you have been raised with Christ. So if you've been raised with Christ. And what does that mean? It means that you've lifted yourself up and you've come and you've said, I don't want that that's not right anymore. And I want to be raised with Christ. Um, and he's seated at the right hand of God. And, and that always makes me think, if I relate myself, if I say to people, I am a follower of Christ, I'm raised with Christ, I walk with him, then am I worthy of going into the, the throne room and getting sitting next to him, seated at the right hand with God? Is so for me, the measure is, am I worthy of sitting at the right hand with God, of God with Christ? It's always quite a scary question because there are some days that I'm really not. I'm not worthy. I can tell you that now, I'm not. And then it says, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness which is idolatry. So I always read the word passion. I think, what does that mean? And so I did a bit of research and it actually means like anger, sort of like, 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 you know, some people are quick to anger and you, you, you say a very, I mean, they want to throw things or they want to swear or they, they make people afraid around them. And, and he, he talks about yeah, impurity, sexual immorality, evil desires and covetousness, which is, um, which is idolatry, you know, things that you want that is not yours and you desire it. Um, and he talks about immoral things and impurity. Um, he talks about those things that take you away from these wonderful relationships with the people around you. If you have a sexual immorality relationships, you either are being unfaithful to your marriage vows or you are um, not keeping yourself holy for marriage um, and for that time that you're going to need to live a life with the person that that you choose to live with have you been raised with Christ are you worthy of sitting in the throne room with him in the presence of God, our Holy Father? Or are you this other person? Have you given up those things, all of those things? And sometimes you've got to sit back and go, it, it, you've got to kind of examine those things. So I'm a married woman, so I've got to sit and go, is my sexual life what it has to be that I can be an honor to my husband? Um Am I thinking pure thoughts about my husband? Do I want him to flourish? Am I thinking pure thoughts about my children or the people I work with? And that is about flourishing, being in community. Is my passion rather for working in God's kingdom than to fight and get my own way? Is that my passion? Are my evil desires about making wealth so that I can be elevated? Or is the making of the wealth some, some way of me doing the work of God, feeding and clothing those who don't have? 
do I want what other people want? And I really like shoes. <laughs> Have, are those shoes my idols? And so these things are difficult. But when you've gone through Easter and you've you felt Good Friday's really sadness, you've hovered around on Easter Saturday, going, "What's happening now?" And then you've come to victory, victory on Easter Sunday, where we ha we we Lord is our Lord is risen. But what does that mean in your life now, today? Read Colossians 3. And the whole piece, 1 to 5, is actually just that. If you've died with Christ, you've risen with Christ, now you must live with Christ at the right hand of God. Think about that. And we'll speak again tomorrow.